What's up guys, my name is Casey and this is eBay Miniature Rescues. Today, we're gonna take this Age of Sigmar Necromancer and try and raise him from the dead. You see what I did there? Yeah, you... A while back, I was browsing on eBay and I came across this little guy for 10 bucks. In all honesty, he's not in terrible shape. A few sprue pieces and some mold lines. The paint job that was started doesn't look half bad either. This seems to be one of those projects that was started with high hopes and then something else just happened to come along. The first thing I'm going to do is scrape the mold lines. Using an X-Acto blade at a perpendicular angle to the line, I can scrape through the thin layer of primer and get to the plastic. Once that's all taken care of, I'm going to prime right over it, and we should end up with a brand new model. I tried something a little different with this model. Instead of shooting black all over, I started with Res Brown Primer. I figured a lot of the cloth on this guy would end up being some kind of leather, so it made sense. After covering the model in brown, I came in with some black Stino Res from below to accentuate the shadows. I really liked how this worked. Normally I come in with a lighter color from above, but this gave the model a much more sinister look that I don't normally get. Coming in with Scale 75's Arbuckles Brown, I'm going to base coat the bottom half of the cloak. This color is really fantastic, one of my absolute favorite go-tos for a deep leather color. And while it is technically a nice rich brown at full opacity, when you thin it down, you can get a really nice variety of dark purple tones. So for leather, you can highlight with lighter brown and it looks pretty nice, or you can go with a lighter purple to make it look, you know, a little more like some fancy fabric. In this case, I opted for terracotta red, which is also a very nice color to put over the top of the brown purple. I thinned this down and went over the upper highlight areas on the cloak several times to build up the red. Next up we have Dawnstone. The upper part of the cloak has a good mix of black and brown. I didn't really want to mess with that gradient we got from the primer, so I decided to roll with it and weather the whole thing with this color. Thinning down the paint a little bit will help blend the color in and I made sure to go over the whole thing several times to get a good variety of textures on the upper cloak. Before I continue painting this mini, I just wanted to let you guys know that instead of selling this guy on eBay, I will be giving this model away. More on that in a little bit, but for now, let's get back to painting. Mephist in red to continue to push the color on top of that cloak. I'm mostly sticking to the raised folds on top and bringing the paint down the sides a little bit. Then I'm going to move on to Kislev Flesh as a final highlight to the cloak and add some texture. Thank you. 
I was trying something a little bit different this time around. Normally, I come in really light with these kinds of highlights, but I really wanted to push all of the pieces on this guy into kind of a more cartoony look. Something that would immediately stand out and look a lot more striking. Oftentimes, I find myself trying to add micro textures and holding back on larger blocks of color. I've always felt like this was a weakness in the way that I paint. So going in the opposite direction seemed like a good way to introduce a new problem to solve. Essentially, changing up the way I approach painting something like this cloak, I can better understand how my paint works, how the overall look of the model will change compared to what I usually do, and it'll give me new information to help me become a better painter. Sometimes you just have to try something to know if it works and not be too afraid of the outcome. I know that if these highlights end up getting away from me, I can always paint over them and try again. To bring in more depth to the cloak, I'll be watering down Nagaroth Knight into a glaze and laying that down into the shadows. This brings in some nice deep shading and adds a good amount of depth to the reds. Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint will be used for the bones and straps. At first, I was going pretty thin with this paint, but I ended up doing a couple of layers to really darken everything down. I wanted to extend that experiment with the cloak and see how a more broad stroke painting approach would affect these skulls. Deeper shadows, brighter highlights. Reichlin Flesh Shade to start with on the skin. This will be the first step into bringing that same level of depth into his face. I wanted to give him a fairly alive feel, but then introduce other colors after to add some darkness and contrast. After that dries, I'll use some Druki Violet to give the skin a more sickly look and really bring out more details. For highlighting and bringing detail back into the face, I'm going to start with Kislev Flesh and slowly add more and more Scale 75's Pale Flesh. At first, I want to layer all over the raised details and then start to place smaller and smaller highlights on the lit side of his face. That way, there will be more of a stark difference between one side and the other, giving way more drama to this tiny figure.
finish off the model, I went for some Vallejo pigment powder. For leather in particular, I really enjoy using pigments. It gives the paint a dusty look and introduces another level of depth in the color. In combination with the scratches, the leather just looks more real. This was a fun model to paint. I tried to get out of my comfort zone a little bit and I feel like it paid off. Using a more broad stroke approach to highlighting and color blending, the model looks much more striking sitting on the table. So I mentioned earlier that I was going to give away this model instead of selling it on eBay. Here's how that's going to work. After much deliberation and some prodding by more than a couple of my YouTube friends, I've decided to start a Patreon campaign. This model will be given away in a random drawing between the first 10 people to sign up. But even if you're not in that first set of people, I will be giving away more models that I paint on this channel as it's included in one of the tiers. There's also access to a Discord community, early access to videos, and a bunch of other fun rewards. I appreciate all the support over the last year and a half that this channel has been around. It's been so much fun chatting and interacting with you all, and I'm super excited to see where this goes in the future. If you're interested in checking that out, the link is in the description below. Thanks again, and here is the finished Necromancer. Thank you once again for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you enjoyed something about this video, please like, share, and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. And don't forget to check out that Patreon link in the description below for a chance to get this super sweet necromancer. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.